Rise and goes anywhere. Wouldn't you be excited if you had one of those? They say this, this is a, um, a multi-tool. If you need this tool to be a fork, it can become a fork. If you need this tool to become a key for your car, it can become a key. If you need this tool to, to become a cell phone, it can become a cell phone. The name of Jesus has just that much power. Now, God told us over in Jeremiah, he said, call unto me. And I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that you know not of. See, sometimes you don't know because you don't call. Mm. Amen, amen. You don't know the blessing that's set for you because you don't call. Right. He even goes on to say that, you know, um, in Matthew 18 and 20, where there's just two or three yeah. gathered in my name, yeah. I'm going to be in the right in the midst. Yeah. Amen. And you wonder where God is. Did you call him? Mm. Lord, where were you? I was waiting on your call. Mm. If you could just say Jesus, right, he'd have showed up amen. and been right where you are. Amen. You could be a mile away. You in Jamaica, you might have lost your keys, you might have lost your phone, but you didn't lose the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Too often, we do everything that we can do, and then the last thing that we remember to do is pray and call on the name of Jesus. How many times have you been trying to do something in your own strength, like this young lady that gave her testimony one Sunday a long time ago when I was over in Sober in that running feet for Christ Christian Center house. She locked herself outside her house and had a pot burning on the stove. So she went to the back door. She went to the front door. She went to the windows. She was she was trying to get in and she said, you know, it's looked like to me that I may have to call somebody to break the door down. I just don't understand it all the door. And she thought, mm. she said, Lord, I don't know how, but in the name of Jesus, you got to get me in this house. And she was standing there. She said, mm, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to And put her hands on the door. And the door opened. But the lock was still. The lock was still it was still locked. My God. But she opened. She put her hands on the door. And the knob was still locked. Jesus. We have to get into the habit of calling on the only name that matters. There's no other name in the heavens whereby that men can or should be saved. Amen. Amen. If you're already saved and you find yourself in the pickle, you say, well, how can I be saved? Somebody might be in a financial bind or financial debt and you still know that Jesus is your Lord and you're still saved and you're living right. Have you called on the name of Jesus? All he's waiting on you to do is use the name that he's given you. Yeah, amen. Oh, and this is just to help you out now. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I want to give you some foundation to stand on. John 14 and 14 says, if you will ask anything in my name, I will do it. You want God to do something for you? You've been asking in Marty name and Mike name and Melanie name and Marsha name and Billy name and Bob name, but you need to ask in the only name that matters. No, Joshua won't do it. No, Jonathan won't do it. They all begin with J, but the name I'm talking about is the name of Jesus. Amen. So you got to know that when you begin to say the name of Jesus, you need to look for the electricity and begin to crackle and pop in the air because mm. that's the name whereby men have been healed. Yes. What, what name? No, not your name. No, not even the name of Troy, but the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My God. No, not the name of Lonnie, not the name of David, but the name of Jesus. Yes. Erica sounds beautiful, but Erica ain't the name is Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Woo. Amen. Amen. I, I want to build your faith in your trust. In that name Jesus. So that when you know the call on the name of Jesus, just like the man that God says before you even breathe. That's why David said, you know, I panted like a deer. Mm. Mm -hmm. woo, woo. I, I want God. When you wake up in the morning and say, you know what, what I want, what I want, the world can't give it to me. I got to get it from the Lord. It has to come by his word. I got to get it by no other means, by whatever means necessary, but by no means except for what the word say. Then you're going to be successful in life. John 15 and 16, it says in the B part of that verse, that whatsoever you ask in the name, ask the Father in my name, I will give to you. So you're going to go to God and you're going to say, hey, Daddy God, in Jesus name, I'm asking to be delivered. In Jesus name, I'm asking to be set free. 
In Jesus' name, I'm asking to prosper. In Jesus' name, I'm asking, God, that I can be able to see through my muddy water and understand that there's dry land for me to stand on. Amen. 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 Jesus. Jesus. His name simply means Jehovah is salvation. Do you get it? The name of Jesus is glorifying his father. Every time you say the name of Jesus, you give glory to the father because you're saying God is my savior. God is my salvation. And, and look, just because you gave your life to Christ and you got saved, he didn't leave you in the burning house. He didn't just bring you out of the burning house even though your lungs were filled with smoke and inhalation and all that stuff when you're sitting there gasping and your eyes are running and you're coughing. No, he, was, he brought you out of where you were yeah. and took you to a place where they did a little triage on you and then he brought you to the house of God. So you understand what I'm saying? God just did not save you. When you call on the name of Jesus, it is not, he's, he's not just going to pick you up out of your mess. He's going to place you in a place where not only is he going to save, but he's going to heal. Amen. Amen. That's how powerful that name is. It don't just leave you out or bring you out of the mess so that you can choose. Well, you know what? <laughs> I'm out of the smoke. I'm out of the burning house. I might just lay here and die because I can't breathe. Mm -mm. Jesus. Can y'all feel it? You, see, you, you, you got to know that when you call on the name of Jesus, it shifts. The atmosphere. Amen. Well, Pastor, I, I don't get it. See, you won't get it until you understand just how powerful the name is. See, whenever I first got saved and I began to read about this man named Smith Wigglesworth who lived in the early 1900s, how he was so powerful, didn't have the education that a lot of us have in here. Maybe might have had a sixth grade education if it was that much. And he was 11 years old when he started to work, you know, work as a plumber. So that was his trade and his, he spoke with broken English. But Smith Wigglesworth, at a young age, after getting saved, he, he ministered salvation to his mom. No other name that, that he knew now that was powerful but the name of Jesus. And he began to pray for people and great miracles happened. And there was this one particular man that said that he was praying for. There are many different ones, but the one, and they called consumption, but it was called TB. He was, he was bedridden and dying with tuberculosis in the 1900s, where there was really no cure like we know today. You know, we don't have TB outbreaks in which it going to hurt his body. But here this man laying on his deathbed. And so he came into town. They found that he was there. They went to get Smith Wigglesworth. Great man of God. Where he preached and healing broke out. And he called. And so here it is. They're standing around this bed. Him and the parents of this man that is here and two other believers. So they're all standing around the bed. And they've already prayed now for, for the space of about 35 minutes to an hour. And nothing is happening. Smith said, wait a minute. We've done everything that God has called us to do. Let me wait on further instruction. And he stood there and they were waiting. He said, yes. They were holding hands. He said, Jesus. He said, Jesus. And they began to say it with him. Come on, say it with me. Jesus. Man's not moving yet. They said it again. Jesus. Call it on the only name that matters. Mm -hmm. A name whereby many have called upon and been healed and been saved and been delivered Jesus. of all of their afflictions. They call upon a name that denotes power, a name that denotes saving, a name that denotes the grace and the power to pull you out of the place where you used to be. A name that will bring change to your atmosphere. A name that will clean you from the stain that has held you bound up. A name that will bring you to the place where you have favor even when all your paperwork ain't right. They called on the name of Jesus. <laughs> Mind you, they said the man now was written to, he was so sick so long that he looked like a living skeleton that was only breathing just a little bit. But they called on the name of Jesus. And, and he set up. Glory, hallelujah. He sat up on the edge of the bed. He put his hands down. Put his feet down. There were people downstairs who didn't know if he was going to live or die. 
but a, but a, but a noise rang out. Ah! It was it was amazement, and they were running up the sea, and he stood up. Mm. Yes. Bedridden for a long time. Thank you, Jesus. But they call on the name of Jesus. When you have faith and you trust in the name of Jesus, make it your first priority, not your last. The call on the only name that matters. The call on him to go. There's no other name. No other name. That word Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, he is the anointed one. He's the one that comes to bring healing to your situation. Have you ever felt like, Lord, I don't know, I don't know if I can go any further. Remember that he's the author. Who, who's the author? Jesus is the author of your finisher in your faith. He's the author. See, you guys. How many of you like designer clothes? Raise your hand. Designer clothes. Okay, that's that's great. But how many of you like? If you could, not only would they be designer, they would be custom made. That means once you get this suit to fit, see, while me and me and me and me and Mike might be similar in size, it's gonna be fit just my shoulders, just my waist. He'll try it on, and it'll look disproportionate. It won't look right. Vice versa, if he had a custom suit, you know, I might be, we might be about the same size, but it wouldn't fit right on me. But I'm here today to tell you that your faith that God has for you is tailor-made. He is the author. It is written just for you. And he's the finisher. That means he already got it planned out. He just needs for you to step in. Try it on. My God. Don't leave that suit of faith that God has for you. Oh, I know you're already dressed in faith right now because he gave you a measure of faith. But see, when you call on the name of Jesus in your situation, Lord, I'm believing you above all else, above everything else, I'm believing you. Yeah. I'm reminded of a man named Bartimaeus. If you know about Bartimaeus, say, I, I, I know who you're talking about, Pastor. I know who you're talking about, about, Pastor. In Mark, in the 10th chapter, somewhere around the 5th, 46th, in, in the 52nd verse, is this story about this blind man whose name is Bartimaeus. He's the son of Timaeus. And he's sitting there, standing there, whatever it is that he normally does. And he's blind and he can't see. And he said that he heard that Jesus was passing through. And he called on the name Jesus. Now, one account says that when he called on the name, there was some people that tell him, you better shut up. Don't you call on the name of Jesus. Be quiet. But old Bartimaeus says, look, I got to call on him. You can't tell me to be quiet when I know where my breakthrough lies. You can't tell me to stop calling on the knee on the name of Jesus where I know where my help comes from. The Bible says all my help coming from the heal. So I'm looking at the heal when we're coming by help. And I'm calling on the name. Jesus. Jesus stop. How many of y'all want to get Jesus to stop right now? Yes. Right now, you want Jesus to stop and to look at you in your situation. Yes. You want Jesus to look at you in your mess. You want Jesus to look at you so that you can have that breakthrough that you want. You don't see anybody or you shouldn't have anybody speaking in your ear that's going to get you to stop calling on the name of Jesus. I don't care who they are. If it's your mama, if it's your daddy, and you know that you there's a breakthrough in the name of Jesus, you can say, Mama, I don't want to be disrespectful. Daddy, I don't want to disrespect you. But there's a healing in Jesus' name that I got to call on. What I need is in Jesus, Mama. If I don't call on him, then I might miss my breakthrough. I may not get it. Is there any people in the house like Brian Bartimaeus? And you blind and you can't see, but you need God to give you vision right now. You need to call on the name of Jesus. Whatever your situation, you need to call on the name of Jesus. When you pray to God, don't forget to call on the name of Jesus. Your help gonna come and it's gonna come in an instant because you're calling on the name of Jesus. You can take a trip and go to Japan. I don't care. It seems like to be the boat might be messing up, but you need somebody to come by and help you. You better call on the name of Jesus. 